Hi, welcome back to the Mindful Minute. I'm so excited to be making another video. I was gone for a little bit um, out of town and I've been thinking a lot about these videos and the content I'm bringing to you and I'm just really excited to be back um, and give you another video. As always, these videos are supposed to be educational and impactful for you and for your health. Um, and today I wanna to talk to you about cooking oils. So which oils we should be using in the kitchen and which oils we should not be using in the kitchen. Before I get into both of those subjects though, I want to give you just a brief overview of inflammation and how that works in the body, because that's gonna be a key point when we're talking about why you don't wanna use certain oils. So inflammation is something that the body does on its own. It's a natural process and it's actually normally very positive for us. So what happens is when you get a cut or a bee sting or any kind of wound or something like that, this is when inflammation is triggered in the body. So you'll swell up, you'll see it maybe get red or hot, you'll bleed. Um, and when that happens, the inflammation system goes into effect. And there's a lot that goes on at the cellular level to help you stop bleeding, to help you heal up. Um, and so once that whole process happens, um, the inflammation response goes away. So it comes into play when we need it and then it goes away when we start to heal or get better. And that's really positive. Um, unfortunately today we're seeing an overload of inflammation in the body and this is not positive. So food affects inflammation just as much as something like a cut. Um, what you put into your body can be seen as a trigger or a negative thing in the body. And so then this inflammation response is triggered over and over and over again. And unfortunately it never goes off which is not good for us. It's basically like a fire burning inside and inflammation leads to a ton of health issues. So we wanna do our best to live an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, which is not that hard if you're eating a whole foods lifestyle, incorporating your vegetables, your fruits, drinking water and staying away from inflammatory foods. So uh, conventional oils that we've been taught to use in the kitchen are actually highly inflammatory. And that's why I really wanted to talk about this subject today because it is really, really important to understand this information. Just a little background on oils and uses and why we use the oils we do is because the government and a lot of big companies out there in the name of research have told us that these conventional oils are good for us. Um, you know, they're not full of saturated fat. They will help us uh, stay away from heart disease. They are good for us. They are the better option. And in reality now we have a lot of research to back up and show it's just not true. Um, and these oils are things like canola, sunflower, so vegetable and seed oils, um, soybean oils, corn oils, all of these are the oils that we want to stay away from. They are highly processed, which isn't good for us. That breaks down weird in the body and that's not good on its own. But the real reason um, they're so bad for us as it connects to inflammation is because they're made with omega-6 fatty acids. So there's two types of fatty acids, the omega-3s and the omega-6s. And we really need the omega-3s, those are the good ones. Omega-6s we do need, but we need a very small amount. But our Western diet provides much more than we actually need of omega-6s. Um, so these oils are really high in those omega-6s, which triggers the inflammatory response. So every time you're eating these oils, which is very often if you eat any kind of restaurant food or eat out or using them at home, you're causing inflammation to be fired up every single time. So bottom line here, we wanna stay away from those highly processed, high omega-6 fatty acid content oils that we've been taught to use. Um, and we wanna to switch to better, better alternatives. And that is the positive news, is there is better alternatives. I want to talk to you about three specific oils today that I use in my kitchen I think are the best to use um, and I'm going to tell you about the health benefits as well. So the first one is going to be olive oil and there's a lot to this, right? So a lot of people are using olive oil um, right now for all their cooking and they're like, cool, that's good. <laughs> Kind of, not exactly. So olive oil is really good for low heat and raw things. So for instance, if you're making a dressing and it calls for an oil, you can use an olive oil and that's gonna be great. Um, if you're cooking some greens in the skillet, maybe some spinach and it takes a couple minutes to cook those up, that's totally fine. You don't wanna be frying burgers in olive oil. You don't wanna be cooking something in the oven for 25 minutes in olive oil because what happens is it breaks down and it oxidizes and this is not positive um so there's so many great health benefits that come out of olive oil that we want to be able to reap but when we use it at high heat we're not going to get any of those and we're actually going to be doing a detriment to the body so when you're looking for olive oil you want to look for extra virgin olive oil cold pressed Organic is great and positive. It doesn't have to be organic, but a lot of times it does taste better, it seems like when it's organic, but that extra virgin olive oil cold pressed is very important when purchasing olive oil. 
So olive oil has a lot of healthy fats. It's one of those healthy fats we want to incorporate as much as possible if it's of high quality olive oil. Olive oil protects against heart disease and it actually has anti-cancer properties um, because it has a ton of antioxidants in it which kills those free radical cells which end up in tumor growth. So incorporating olive oil as much as possible is great. Just remember to use it uh, raw and at very low level heat cooking. Uh, the next one I want to talk to you about is coconut oil, which I'm obsessed with coconut oil. A lot of people are. There's a lot of information out there about coconut oil and its benefits, but it truly is like a super food. It has so many benefits to it. Um, and it's used in almost all of my cooking. So I use this for all medium, medium to high heat. Um, but I usually just get a big tub of it like this at Walmart and it lasts me for a really long time. So I use it a lot in the kitchen. Obviously I'll melt it sometimes, um, like in the microwave or on the stove if I need to use it like in something that's raw. Um, but I use it a lot when I'm roasting, baking, fr like anything kind of sauteing and I love coconut oil. The biggest question that people ask is my food going to taste like coconut? No, it's a very neutral oil. It doesn't taste like anything. It's very, very neutral. So it's great to use when it comes to coconut oil. It has so many benefits. So coconut oil is really cool because um, it's a different kind of fatty acid than most. It's called a medium chain triglyceride. So if you hear of MCT oils, that's what coconut oil is composed of. And these are great for the body for so many different reasons. And you can just research a little bit about coconut oil and you'll learn a lot about it, but I wanted to kind of uh, pare it down to some really important things to me. So for one thing, it increases energy, which is really cool. So it immediately stores and goes into the liver, um, these ketones, which are what give us energy. So it stores into the liver and then you're able to burn that fuel, fuel throughout the day. So that's how it gives us energy. MCT oils also increase fat burning. So they help us to burn calories a lot quicker. So if you're someone who is looking to lose weight or um, just burn more calories when you're in the gym or something like that, MCT oils are great for that. It increases brain function, which is awesome. There's been a lot of studies done around Alzheimer's and epilepsy uh, with COVID coconut oil and they've had really positive results from that and as well as using it in the kitchen I use it um, as a beauty product all the time so I use it on my hair I use it as a moisturizer on my skin instead of lotion because I'm not a fan of lotion and I use it to take off my eye makeup at night um, I really love how versatile coconut oil is I really love it so coconut oil for the win but for high heat cooking I use avocado oil and avocado oil again has its own benefits it's another one of those great fatty acids and it has the oleic acid in it which again is good for vision and things like that and it's full of antioxidants so again it's been used to treat um, cancer patients um, it's been incorporated to show inhibiting cancer cells and cancer and tumor growth avocado oil also helps to enhance nutrient absorption so when you're eating a lot of nutrients and they're going into the body the avocado oil really helps to absorb those nutrients into the body and again it's a pretty even keeled taste um, it's pretty neutral so it has a really high smoke point so I use it for um, cooking anything that I'm kind of like frying in the skillet if I'm doing burgers in my cast iron skillet or something like that I'm gonna use avocado oil it is a little more pricey than the rest but it's okay because I don't use it that often so it lasts me for a really really long time um, a lot of people aren't familiar with avocado oil, but it's sold in most places these days. They have it at Walmart. They have it at a really good price in Aldi, um, as well as the coconut and the extra virgin olive oil. Um, Aldi and Walmart are my two go-tos to get these at affordable prices and in bigger uh, sizes. So um, these are the oils and things that I cook with. They have the most health benefits. You're gonna get the most out of them. This is gonna be a game changer in your kitchen if you're not sure what oils to cook with. And also if you're just looking for some really healthy alternatives to oils um, and it's just one of those things that seems like a small change but it's gonna um, have huge implications for your health. So as usual, like this video, please share it with someone that you think could benefit from this information and don't forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube um, and have a good day.